friends. Oh, I'm so happy you're back with us this week. A lot just happened. Twitter feuds, deal breakers, Merkins, the L word. And to top it off, Charles has just basically, well, erupted and laid it all out on Liza. What is Liza to do? Will she run for cover? Will she run towards him? Or like the rest of us, will she just pretend like nothing ever happened? Mm -hmm. I'm Taylor Strecker coming to you live from Facebook. We are also live from the flight deck at the historic Gray Bar building here in New York City. You guys, right now, let's relive that emotional explosion. This is not like you to be so angry before you know the facts. Well, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't know anything. I don't know how I'm going to replace our biggest earner. I don't know how I'm going to make payroll next month. And I don't know why you're dating a 40-something guy in publishing who isn't me. Oh, my. I know. I know. That was intense, okay? What do you think about how uh, Charles revealed his pent-up feelings towards Liza? Tell us what you think with a like, love, or wow, shock emoji. I think that's my emoji. Everybody's. Right? Seriously. And we will discuss your reactions to his action on our first fan break, which is happening in about five minutes. But first, we've got fabulous guests on the show. Fiona Robert, also known as Emily. Hey, girl. Hi. Hi. And Tessa Albertson, also known as Caitlin. Hey, girls. Hey. Hey. And of course, you at home, our VIP guests. Also, we have our live audience. We want to hear from you tonight during our fan breaks, multiple fan breaks. Uh, we're going to read your comments and answer your questions. And later, we're going to let you decide what makes our makes or breaks a deal with our game, Let's Break a Deal. Uh, and also, hence, our appropriately titled Cocktail, mm. the deal breaker. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Chin, 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 chin. Okay, so first things first. Let's get down to it with the two of you. What are your thoughts about how Charles just handled himself? Okay, he basically screamed passionately <laughs> in Liza's face. Uh, do you think he's actually still good for Liza after all that? I think he's, I think he's good for her. You do? I do. Yeah. The one thing that kind of irks me, though, is does he actually think that she's 27? Yeah. Because... I, I'm going to say I don't think he knows. You don't I, think no, he knows? I don't think he knows either. I don't think he knows either. No. no, I think he's completely clueless. I mean, you're you're her daughter. What do you what do you think? You're the expert. Well, well, I mean, I think that Josh <laughs> was good for her, yeah. but I think there's just something a little odd about the fact that she, that he's in love with a 27 year old, you know? And it's, I but I, I almost. Think he responds to her maturity. Like, I think that that is why he finds himself, like, he's going to her for advice about his yeah. his book in the New York Times, like, his um, interview, and, yeah. like, and she's there with all the right answers that, like, support his soul. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. It's like, she's, yeah, she's not weird. age appropriate, but at the same right. time, it's because she's not that age. Right. So yeah. he's probably so conflicted. Yeah. So we, we say yes or no to, to them together. I mean, I say yes. Yes. But he's also her boss. So right. how do well, you deal with that? That brings us to our next question. Do you think that it's going to make things really weird at work? Definitely. After he just spilt his love to her, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I don't want to see Liza, like, throw her, you know, dreams out the door again for a guy. You not know? Yeah. for a guy. I mean, like, they've already kissed, though. Like, he yes. clearly, he clearly, every time that they're talking, it's like, it's like, you know, like, lightsaber forces through their eyes. Like, <laughs> right. And I never get the impression that he's, like, just, promoting her and stuff because he likes her. Like, I think he really does value her as a team member and value her as a publisher, so. So is this gonna help or hurt her career? I say she goes to HR and just, like, takes <laughs> it all to the right bank. Away. Yeah? Yeah, it gets wow. back to Josh. Wow, that's, that's my story. No shame, wow. all right. <laughs> okay. okay, so yeah. Team Josh over here. A little bit, sorry, I can't help it. Yeah, I miss Josh. Well, you guys have yet to share a scene, but you both have something in common. You have the capability and knowledge to blow Liza's cover. So, Fiona, let's start with you. You're kind of the bad girl in the cast, yes? I, yeah, I'm the villainess. <laughs> and uh, the girls in the show, okay, all the other girls, they, like, support each other. You, like, you'll step on anybody to get ahead. Absolutely. So I have to say, what do you have to say for yourself? Um, here's the thing. And I know it's not you, it's Emily. <laughs> <laughs> the line is fine. But I think that... I really do think that Emily wants to be best friends with Liza and Kelsey, which is why she's, like, so enthusiastic to be around them all the time. That's a really good point. Like, she wants to hang out yeah. with them. She's like, guys, like, let's get Frosé. Like, I'm so pumped you're coming to the party. Frosé. But she it's also frose. wants to get ahead. So, really, I will ask you this. How different is Emily to Liza? Oh, girl. 
She wants to get a hug. She That's a mic drop a right there, for real. <laughs> wow. You, you know, really... she's doing what she got to do. Yeah, they're kind of, they're, they're of the same elk. Yeah, they kind of yeah. are. I mean, she's a little meaner, but. Slightly. Slightly meaner. Yeah, a, a, a little more conniving. <laughs> a little Emily, more out there. Is, is Emily talented? As a writer? I mean, I mean, honey, the numbers speak, though, right? The numbers speak. But didn't Liza rewrite most? I'm just, I mean, oh, I'm yeah, just. Got to defend just, her mom. Touche. Touche. Yeah, just, well, Tess, okay. Okay, so you're off the hook because you saved Liza and Kelsey's relationship thanks to your medical emergency. You're welcome. But as we saw on tonight's episode, you blew her cover. I know. Let's take a look. <laughs> My mom lives too long. We'll deal. Did you pay? Wait, mom? That's her name for me, mom, because I'm just always mothering her. Wear your scarf. Eat your vegetables. How huh? <laughs> we laugh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I guess she's 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 not going to introduce me. I'm I'm the daughter, Caitlin. Hi. If we don't get a move on, mom, I'm going to miss my train. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, really? How could you? Well, I don't know. So maybe that's that's how I could. Oh my gosh. I was slapping my forehead during that scene. I know. I know. That's my job. I that's what I do. Does Kaylin think that her mom has completely lost her mind from I, that moment? I don't Okay, I think that she's definitely being weird and I don't think un until after Caitlyn says I'm the daughter and sees that glare. Like she knows her mom well enough to know that that glare is not good news. Right. That okay, she was lying about her age to this guy. Um, I don't think, I think that she trusts her mom enough that she knows that she's not going crazy. She must be doing this for a good reason. Right. Um, but hopefully this would spur a conversation between the two of them of like, so from now on, should I say like, you know, I'm like your, your friend from, from you know, college or what do you want me to, you know? Um, because I, I think she's willing to go with the flow. She just needs to be on the same page. Yeah, she needs to be let into the story. Yeah. Exactly. Because, I mean, my mom in real life always, like, drags me over and is like, this is my daughter, you know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's something that most mothers are proud of. Right. Yes, so. exactly. So her not introducing is weird, and I think you're maybe starting to catch on to something. Yeah. Let's say that without giving too much away. I wonder for Liza, though, like, because she is lying to the people in her life that are friends and coworkers, I wonder if it's different for her to lie to, like, a family member oh gosh like that must be a really hard thing to do yeah Ex yeah I would I would say so except the reason that she's lying is for work right you know like it's, it's, a for business. Reason. it's exactly. not a personal yeah. thing and I think knowing Caitlin if Liza were to tell her she would be empowered she'd be inspired that her mom did what she had to do to get a job that yeah, she deserved for you yeah ultimately you were inspired by like Times Square <laughs> dress up furry I she was a <laughs> costume really character in Times Square oh I forgot about which that which is so not Liza <laughs> which is amazing yes. okay well let's move on to our other emotional explosion Kelsey's love life so Kelsey and Zane mm. were Twitter flirting and feuding and it seems to have led to their demise so yeah. I have to ask you what do you think about Dana somebody who you're competitive with good or bad Fiona I think it's good okay I I love having relationships where people push each other to like follow their dreams and do what they're passionate about and so I think if there's a little competition there it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing no okay Tessa yeah I think I think it's good but I mean what Zane did was pretty crappy same right? field so, maybe not so much I don't know like they're both in publishing that's I, a lot it's a little too close yeah, I think it's good if you're like pushing and nudging each other and and you know yeah. making each other like want to be better people right but but if you're directly competing, he really yeah and Kelsey if you're stealing from them basically like that's they, hard and they, I that mean, would get weird he went to her phone without her permission yeah, yeah that is not cool that's not being competitive that's do we think that they have a chance getting yeah. back together no no. Oh, Whoa. He's <laughs> I was like, no. You know what? <laughs> don't be so indecisive. <laughs> um, I would, I would kick that guy out. I'm just saying. Goodbye. I don't know. No, no forgiveness. Did you see that shirtless scene? Cause. Oh, girl. True, it's true. It's true. <laughs> okay. Also, how do you guys feel about uh, social media in its role in relationships? Oh no. my god. No. How do we? So how do we deal with it? It's the aspect so of it. stressful. I know. It's like, should you not even follow somebody that you're dating on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter? You can follow them. I would say don't actively go to their Instagram, though. Right. It just freaks you out. Yeah. It's true. Especially Before if they're, you like, you know. met them or something, like, I think I matched with a guy on, like, a dating app, and then he followed me on Snapchat, and we haven't even met in person. <laughs> Yeah. So, huh. yeah. I don't know. We live know. in a very strange world. Yeah. Yes. Also, yeah. you know, you can just go down that maze of, like, seeing 
uh, someone that you're interested in in a picture with a beautiful girl. Oh, then you click that. on yeah. their Instagram. Oh, no, and you're like, it's over. It's their ex is so hot. I'm waging a war. That's a big fight that What night. if it's not their ex? Exactly. What if, you what if even, that yeah, picture was posted like, like two weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all Maybe fun it's and games sister. until somebody loses an author, which happened to Kelsey. So later on, Fiona and Tessa, you guys are going to give us your take on uh, takeout tips of what not to post when you're dating, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. You are the experts, the millennial experts, as far as we're concerned. But now to our first fan break. We asked you what you thought about how Charles uh, went about sharing his true feelings towards Liza, and here's what you had to say with these Facebook emojis. Okay, so uh, Allison says, uh, shock face emoji. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked it came out of nowhere, but I can't tell if Charles will close himself back up again after reading that outburst based on the way he's acted in the past. Will he, like, clam back up? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then Joy says, happy face. She says, I'm glad he's finally admitted how he feels. They belong together. And uh, just FYI, the majority of you are happy and shocked faced. So it's tied. Yeah. Look at that mm. right there. Where you guys fall? I'm happy. I like Charles. I think he'd be good for her. Yeah. I'm happy. This has been going on since season one. Yeah. It's so, about time. Yeah. yeah. I want to see them like hot and heavy make out. Let's see it happen if it doesn't work out. I want to see out. him like, you know, like, like the notebook kiss, like just put, Girl. put his fingers through her hair. Can we get some rain in there? Like, <laughs> yeah, let's get like a rainy New York Oh, okay, day. a fire oh. hydrant. A New York fire hydrant explodes. Oh, a little summertime action. <laughs> I like that. Whoa. Okay, our next fan break is in two minutes, <laughs> and we want to know what you thought about how Maggie handled this stash sitch. Oh uh, take a look at this hairy clip. <laughs> Will you shave me? <laughs> I have literally not thought of anything else since the moment we met. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait, wait! Okay, so... <laughs> I actually wanted to do that the whole episode, too. Um, it seems like the stash was a deal breaker for Maggie, needless mm. to say. So what are your dating deal breakers in real life? No headboard. That's a deal breaker. Girl. Have a real bed, please. <laughs> I don't have a headboard. <laughs> don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging you. You're an accomplished woman. It's different. It's different. <laughs> Except for right in this moment. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm mortified. OK, Fiona. <laughs> I'm honestly going to go right back to the social media thing. Like, I feel like when, mm -hmm. when you're dating somebody and they're either too all over your Facebook or like they're watching your Snap story, but like they're not actually snapping at you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, it's like, mm, yep. I'm over you. I'm also going to say a woman with a mustache like that is a dating deal breaker for yeah. me. It might be, but I'm just not sure that I would get my position where, like, where I'd be in the bath with someone that I was, like, what? already, like, mm. You think? <laughs> you think? I think I let it go a little far there. Yeah, right. I mean, baths are not the a most appropriate place when you're, like, not attracted to somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just thought if she shaved it off, I mean, I'll be good. She's beautiful, though. Yeah, that's tough, Spectacular. Though. I know. Because it's, like, the full package, but... And then extra. And then a little but bow on the top. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to Facebook and see what you guys had to say about Maggie's close shave. Uh, Jamie says Maggie should be bohemian and ignore a girl's cookie uh, duster or stash. Cookie Aww, duster. Oh, nice. I love that. Oh my gosh. Uh, Shelly says Maggie is a goddess, and goddesses don't want to feel or see the hair for that matter. And then Jamie says cry face emoji. IDK, if she should have done that but it sure was hilarious I, know. I they cut out the shrug at the end of that scene but that oh. shrug is like perfect it was that was so hysterical yeah. i loved it okay well our next fan break is in three minutes and guess what it's your chance to ask the girls any questions that you want so send in your questions for fiona and tessa right now and make them count because only a couple are going to be able to be mm. asked uh now to our fun break of the night it's game time okay so it's let's break a deal okay. so Here's the deal. I describe a scene that could be IRL. That mm -hmm. means in real life. I am cool. I know that. But it's actually in Younger. So it's an actual scene from Younger. And you guys tell us if it's a deal breaker or not a deal breaker. And then also you at home play along with us by typing in yes for deal breaker and no for not deal breaker. Here we go. Are you ready? Okay. Are you nervous? A little. <laughs> okay. Just gotta go with my gut, Whew. you know? Yeah. Well, number one, your date shows up with a facial flaw like a um, mustache. 
No, not a deal breaker. What about a huge pimple? Oh, that'll go away. Pimples are temporary. <laughs> Toothpaste. That'll get it. We'll take it off. What about a booger that was permanently stuck on their face? A, a booger that was permanently stuck on oh, their face? Permanently, but like, are they the, okay? Like, all night long. It was, you know what? No, they're an alien. Because that's not a thing. <laughs> Okay, moving wow. on. Number Poor two, thing. someone professes his or her interest loudly, kind of like the way Charles did, like passionately. I love that. <laughs> Not a deal breaker. I'm just a no person. Don't be swayed. Okay. Be your own self. It's not a deal breaker, but like if they're professing something like Charles did, that's okay. But if they're professing like, you know, some like crazy, you know, off Broadway play that they saw and how it's like dealing with the dichotomy of like oh, gentrification. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I don't need to hear that, all right? <laughs> like that's that's I don't like Talking pretentious. For other people, like if yeah, if you're just a loud talker and you yes. think everyone's interested, then right. I might be a little turned off. Okay, so no head forward and I'm a loud talker, two strikes for me. <laughs> okay, number three, your significant other says thank you to an I love you text. Deal breaker or not deal breaker? Thank you. Do I love you? I'm, I'm still on no, and I'll tell why? you why. I'll tell you why, because I just live in such denial that I'd be like, oh, isn't that hilarious? That they said. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, thank you, Beth. I'd give them like a chance to like. I'm impressed. You're open-minded. Tessa. I would, I, would, I would say that's a deal breaker, a deal. because my love is precious yeah. and hard to come by. You heard it here first. So <laughs> if you say thank you, I'm like, all right. Well, yeah, you just lost. I that. deserve to be celebrated, not tolerated. Yeah, mm. yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, number four, the person you're dating is as competitive as you are. Dating deal breaker or not? Yes or no? <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yeah, you I like the competition? Sexy. Yeah. I do too. Except if it's like over like Scrabble or something. Then uh, it's, oh, <laughs> yeah. If it's about petty things, like if it's like a one-upping thing, right. then that's. Don't do that. Right. Men with their board games. Don't be weird. Right, sorry I that can't. we're smarter than you. I can't. Right, exactly. And number five, you discover that your friend owns a Merkin. <laughs> Dating deal breaker, yes or no? I mean, maybe, yeah. yeah. What's a Merkin again? Oh, right. it's, um, it's a, um, a wig you put on your private parts. Uh, it's like a pubic hair wig. Uh, so this is, your, this is your boyfriend that has the Merkin? Well, or? well actually, you know what? Fiona, let's ask you this, okay? So, girl. That's right, I am the expert here. We're just gonna cut right to this. Okay, so a dog Merkin. How were you able to do a dog Merkin scene without losing your, I mean, how do you keep a straight face? Um, because it's very serious. I need to pull this <laughs> off. I can't have people thinking that Gary is not Pearl. So I was just trying to really get by there and skin of my teeth. And speaking of which, you have uh, your your very famous wow. book. My very successful book. Successful with book, me. yes. Thank you. Pearls, Pearls of, Wisdom. of Wisdom. You're on the back. And I'm on the back here. This is Stop it. This is me and, and Pearl or Gary um, or lounging. Gary. Yeah, wh who's in that picture? Um, and is the Merkin on? I cannot reveal the secret. <laughs> and I, I am covering the area, the area in question, so. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. That's hysterical. And this is a treasure. Wait, is there like real, are there, are there real words in there? Oh, no, this is, so this was given to me by the props department after we shot that scene. And oh. it's actually a really sick photography book inside. Oh, wow. Wow. But they did all this amazing stuff on the back that is real. Like, they asked, um, and nobody has better advice about your Roth IRA than Pearl the Dog. Yes. I love Pearl the Dog. So, Pearls of Wisdom. Pearls, Pearls of Wisdom in stores now. Okay, so right now we're on to our takeout tips, guys. So, uh, as you all saw, uh, Kelsey's Twitter flirt feud cost her uh, company client. She almost got fired, and it tarnished her really hot and heavy relationship. So, we've got two savvy millennials here, and you're going to tell us what not to post while we are in date mode. So, let's start with you, Tessa. All right. So, first of all, drunken posts, absolute no. Do not post anything while you're drunk. No. It could be to your mom, it could be to an old teacher, it can be to someone that you're dating. Just, you're never going to say what you actually should say. No, never. No, exactly. Don't drink and text. Do not drink and text. And one time, I tried to change the last digit of my phone number to when I, a guy that I wasn't interested in was like I being that persistent. That's my but move. my mom's phone is one digit off of mine. And instead of going up, I went down. Oh, so no. then you gave your mom's phone number? I gave out my mom's phone number <laughs> while drunk. So oh, no. tell me he didn't send her like this racing texts. 
No, no. I warned her. Imagine? I warned her in advance. Oh, oh my, my god. She was like, drink less. I was like, <laughs> you're a good mom. Okay, uh, next tip comes from you, Fiona. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm all about the excessive I've moved on updates. Okay. So this is like after the breakup, and if you're a post, like, just don't post a lot of, like, Instagrams and... Facebook of like, you know, just a really sexy nude of you just all of a sudden just a casual is nude just a casual nude. After divorce. That's yeah. yeah. And and then, you know, all your friends are kinda gonna be like, Oh, so and so's out there missing you. Oh, <laughs> you what? know? It's like you're supposed to be home with Ben and Jerry's crying to it. Or just like binging younger. Just get off the radar a little bit. Friends. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Right. You know, because everyone else can tell. Yeah, okay. It's for testing too much. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tessa? Okay, so responses to future ex. I would say, especially as you get older, you just want to be classy with all the relationships that you have, especially like in New York and if, you know, like for Kelsey and Zane, if you're running in the same circles, That's, you yeah, don't want to have bad blood. You don't yeah. want no, your yeah. reputation to get tarnished. It's true. So it's better to be classy. And then, you know, even for exes, yeah. just don't talk to them. Just, yes. just don't respond to them, I would say. Boy, bye. Boy, Boy bye. bye. I actually, I have pants. Inspired by Patricia Fields, Stop. I have pants that I painted boy by on. I love Patricia Come on. Fields. Yeah. Oh my god. Check it out on my Instagram. <laughs> I will. Super fun. Let's all like that. And I have a bonus tip. Yes. Which is in this day and age, do not break up with people over text message. I can't mm. believe I still have to say this. I know. I got broken up with text message a month ago. No. And we were together for a year. No. Yeah. Give me his address. I'm gonna go give him a visit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well now on to your questions for Fiona and Tessa. Okay, so Melissa asks Tessa, do you think Liza will tell Charles her real age this season? I hope she does. I don't know because actually this past episode is the last episode I've seen. Um, but I think that Charles is really good for Liza. And I, I, would, I would hope that if, that if Liza were to finally tell him that he wouldn't be that surprised. Yeah, right. That he would just, it would make so much sense to him. Or maybe relieved. Yeah. That would be nice. Okay, and uh, Alexandra asks Fiona, are you hashtag Team Charles or hashtag Team Josh? And do you think it would be okay for Kelsey to date Josh? Ooh. I will say I am hashtag Team Liza. Oh. Because I... <laughs> I'm also running for president. No, really, you are. <laughs> I would vote for you. <laughs> I think whatever Liza wants, wherever her heart ends up, is where she's supposed to be. Okay. But I love Charles. Oh, okay. Well, there, there you but go. But I miss Josh's tattoos. <laughs> you're, you're conflicted. Yes. Hashtag conflicted. So don't conflicted. vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, right now it is time to go to our live audience. Are you excited? Are you ready? Yay! You get to actually yeah! talk to them in the flesh. Okay, so, oh, gorgeous girl in the jean jacket, what's your question? Hi, I'm Steph. I'm from New York. My question is for Tessa. So I know we've heard a lot about your opinions about who Liza should be with, but what do you think Caitlin would think if she knew Charles was in the picture? Do you think she'd want someone who's more age appropriate for Liza or because she knows Josh, do you think she would still want her to be with him? Um, I think that, I mean, my father, the, the guy who plays my dad, he's like kind of a douche, you know? <laughs> like, I think as far as the divorce went, I was totally on my mom's side. Um, and I think that Charles is pretty awesome. I think he is age appropriate because he's also in his 40s, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think he's accomplished. He really values how intelligent Liza is. Um, so I think Caitlin would be like, go mom. Like, you are slaying life. You're getting back on the saddle. Like, I think she'd be super pro Charles. <laughs> Good question. Great answer. Okay, next. Yes. Hi, I'm Chelsea from New York. My question's for Fiona. Uh, what do you think is next for your character? Is she done blackmailing Eliza? I hope so, because I think she really wants to be friends with her. <laughs> but um, I, I will say that Liza was the first to say that this could be a series. Yes. So I don't know. The future is, future is bright, though. <laughs> well, you guys, that's it for us. We're done. Ah! Too quick, right? Yeah. I know. Too quick. Flew by. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Tessa, for joining me, Taylor Strecker, in our living room. Yay. And thank you and for engaging, for making comments on 
Facebook for tweeting, snapping, gramming, oh. uh, as you do tonight and every night. And be sure to follow us throughout the week on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all the social medias, at Younger TV, and use that hashtag, Getting Younger. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see you next Wednesday night when we're going to be joined by younger writer Joe Murphy yeah. and special oh. younger superfan country artist Lindsay L. Okay. Very exciting. And we leave you now with a trout-worthy scene yeah. that we picked up off the cutting room floor. It's good. What? You should know how I feel. I don't use words. I use actions. I, I clean up his toothpaste blobs. I do this when he tells a joke. I gave him three drawers, Liza. I had to put my bras and my nylons together. I have very low dividers and things leap over. Oh, my breasts smell like nylon. I might as well be wearing shoes up here.